Hi guys, Suzy the Diadem, living positive regardless. Doesn't matter the point at which you are in life, but we rock positivity all the way. Yeah, I'm always excited when I want to think that we are going to learn something new and that we are going to impact each other positively. So today I have a very interesting topic that I want us to discuss and I have a guest, uh, a guest who has been here before and today she's back with new and more wisdom. Thank you for those who have been watching, thank you for your comment, thank you to the new subscribers, karibu sana to this channel. Um, keep on commenting, keep on liking my videos and sharing out and I believe we shall continue to learn. Karibu sana as I welcome our guest to come and be with us. Keep once again, karibu sana. Thank you. Suzy ule dadem. Thank you. Ukiona mtu wakikuja mara ya pili, it's a good, uh, you give something good. Thank That's you. why we are thirsty to still have you back. So karibu sana. Thank but you. because of the new viewers, maybe you still need to introduce yourself. Let the viewers get to know you. All right. Thank you so much, Susan. So my name is Kimberly Fiona. I am a recent graduate of Kenyatta University with a bachelor's degree in gender and development studies as well as psychology. Thank wow. You. Beautiful. Uh, the topic of today, I want to introduce it as now, and we want to talk about uh, gender equality, which is a very major thing, not only to the youth, but to everybody in the society. It has touched every group in the society. And so today, and uh, now that Kib has told us what she's done professionally, I think she's best suited to discuss this. So karibu sana to this and um, as we start Kibo, yeah. I'd want to know or to understand uh, mm -hmm. your course yeah. now that you've done um, gender development. Yeah? Yes. Uh, what do you think, what are the skills and the knowledge that you have acquired both in class and outside the class that makes you think you are informed to discuss this topic? Um, so basically, as you can hear from the topic, we talk about gender mm -hmm. and development. So most of the things we study in gender and development is how we look at how different sexes are contribute to development, per se, in terms of gender in agriculture, gender in education, gender in things like medical field, like cause different genders, that is both men and women, mm -hmm. play different roles in different settings. Mm -hmm. So that's one thing that we study. We also study the socialization process of how we are, because when we are born a boy or a girl, mm -hmm. then we become a man or a woman. Mm -hmm. So th there's, there's the whole difference between sex, there's a whole difference between gender. Gender is not sex, so it's actually defined differently. Okay. So these are the, some of the things that we discussed and we teach or learn while in the university when you're studying for gender and development studies. We also look at the history of how about how these things came about, like how feminism movement came, why we have gender equality right now, why, how gender equity came, the affirmative action. Those are all things that came out of, sprout out of this type of movements okay. uh, that which, which are taught in gender and development studies. Okay. Yes. Wow. Nice. So we are going to learn from a very informed perspective, right? I am hoping so. <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 nice. Eh? So let me start by asking, are you a feminist? Uh, I wouldn't, I wouldn't define myself as a feminist, but if if we were to go by the initial definition mm -hmm. of a feminist, mm -hmm. then probably I would have been a feminist. Mm -hmm. But you know how things are defined and how they are actually presented in the actual field are actually very different. Mm -hmm. but because of how people view feminism mm -hmm. and the kind of association that is actually re related to feminism, mm -hmm. I don't think I'd want to say I am that. Mm -hmm. But if you are to use the initial, the course, of feminism, then maybe I would have said I am a feminist. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On that note, I would want you to help us understand uh, because it has been a movement, and especially in Kenya, yes. where we've really seen uh, the woman and the girl uh, development being something that is so major yes. and it has cut across so many areas, even politically, we've mm -hmm. seen so much changes. Uh. Mm -hmm. So, do you think the, 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 the real idea of the introduction of now that you're saying I would want to be associated if it was well defined, eh? but it seems like you're feeling it has been misused or taken in a different route. Blown out of proportion. Uh -huh. The meaning has been distorted along the way. Mm -hmm. um, you see, if you look at uh, before, uh, feminism came in 
as a step that was trying to bring women because if you look at the traditional setting a woman's job was basically to be seen and not to be heard they were literally in literal term a helper to the man where their job was basically tied to the house that is giving birth taking care of the home nurturing the kids ensuring that your husband was well fed mm -hmm. and the home was running smoothly for this man to be able to provide for the family mm -hmm. that was the role of a woman uh -huh. but feminism when it, it it was introduced it was to it was trying to recognize the role of women in development mm -hmm. the type of because if you look at agriculture 70% of the labor is actually offered by women uh -huh. so that's what feminism came to do it wanted the world to recognize that as much as we our role was in the house there was so much more that we were doing that was contributing to the development of the country and the nation and the world at large and they needed the world to recognize that and be and women included as in part of the decision making process uh -huh. so that's how feminism came about uh -huh. but if you look at how feminism is defined is the advocacy for equal rights for all genders mm -hmm. and advocacy in terms of equal opportunity equal access to resources that is in terms of education you know awareness right now we live in a world of information that is the whole point of technology and all this. that's why you see there's a lot of advocacy in women in stem because even traditionally women were considered that only even for those women now when education was introduced because if you look at the history of Kenya even women never used to vote mm -hmm. at some point right yeah. and with the time that also changed mm -hmm. now these feminism movements these are the changes that came with those movements yeah. integrating women one thing that they actually did is ensure that women had the right to vote and choose a leader mm -hmm. and then from there we had other development that came from such kind of you know movement and advocacy now all the things that we enjoy right now as women the modern who we call the modern woman the benefits of that is sprouting from the feminism uh -huh. and you see now that was a good type of feminism mm -hmm. but along the way you know for every good thing mm -hmm. there's also a bad side uh -huh. there's always it, you cannot just say this thing has only benefits without consequences they are actually there's always two sides to a coin mm -hmm. so these are the good side of feminism mm -hmm. but now what we do we fail to look at what are the consequences of having this and not having that you understand because before we did not have women uh, being educated but it doesn't mean that world was not operating mm -hmm. it was working mm -hmm. and people are living harmoniously True. we had kids who were raised well yeah. we had a society that was thriving yeah. there was a lot of food mm -hmm. and there was communi communalism like everyone was looking out for each other yes. it was all about us not me mm -hmm. you understand yeah. but now with the whole change in feminism and in women being able to access because right now if you look at even women empowerment we have like it is defined in five terms in mm -hmm. five it has different like five stages mm -hmm. where we say we look at the woman's self-worth mm -hmm. that is we are trying to gauge her ability we are giving them the right to be able to decide mm -hmm. and make their own choices right yeah. we have we're saying they have a right to equal resources and opportunities that just as men uh -huh. okay mm -hmm. we also say we are giving them power and control to okay. control their lives both within and outside their home uh -huh. and then we have the ability for them to actually influence change outside now in the society into what we want it to be okay you know so that's what empowerment came to do and what feminism has done for us uh -huh. but then now what are the consequences of us having attained this because there has to be uh -huh. there has to be a part that is suffering uh -huh. yes okay so the, the 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 actual or the real the original definition you would be proud uh, to be mm. a feminist yes. because definitely those uh, the things that you're touching on they are really very important mm -hmm. as much as you're saying we still used to live anyway <laughs> even before then eh? yes so i want you to help me look at this woman mm -hmm. who has um, who ha who is now living at this time mm -hmm. where we have all embraced feminism mm -hmm. and that woman who lived then eh? and tell me what do you think or what do you see are there are there differences between this woman and the other woman and would you want us to concentrate with this and continue with that trajectory or you think we have missed out by changing that woman if there is any change okay the traditional woman that is now a grandparent because i don't i also don't think my mom is a traditional woman as much uh -huh. because i feel like she came in because feminism movement started in the late 1960s to around 
2000 you know mm-hmm. it's been it's, it's it has been a journey we, we have the first wave second wave third wave now even the sixth wave of feminism uh-huh. so this has things that have taken years over 50 years and what some people say is we've been trying to atone for the sins of our great grandparents and the injustices that were actually done for women mm-hmm. like female genital mutilation all those kind of things early marriages which are still a problem until now mm-hmm. and where women didn't have a, ro- a right to choose how many kids they wanted as long as the man wanted kids women would still have you know what that those those things have changed yeah. now the traditional woman did not have that right mm-hmm. but it does not mean i don't know if you read uh, uh, this book uh, by margaret ogola uh, the river and the source mm-hmm. so the river and the source clearly d- illustrates mm-hmm. who the traditional woman was mm-hmm. and how feminism or the new advocacy for women inclusion in development and in other sectors that is economic social and political yes. has changed mm-hmm. and she was as you can see the book she killed most of the men mm-hmm. right yeah. because she was trying to highlight the role of a woman mm-hmm. in a society that women can be just be more than just household you know keepers you know mm-hmm. and she did a good job if you look at it like how she brought it out i didn't even think about it until i was doing gender mm-hmm. and i was like ah that book is a feminist <laughs> feminist <laughs> book you know uh-huh. Uh-huh. and i was like ah but looking back at it, the traditional woman, the one who would take care of, it doesn't mean it didn't work. Mm-hmm. I kind of prefer, for me, mm-hmm. I would have said that environment worked best. Uh-huh. It worked best because there were clearly defined roles. Every person mm-hmm. knew what they needed to do. Okay. I think one challenge that you have with this current generation, mm-hmm. the, gen- the millennials and the Generation Z, as we call them, mm-hmm. is there are no clearly defined roles because right now what a woman used to do before a man can do now Mm -hmm. and what a man used to do before a woman can still do it now you understand it's not like only men are the sole providers women are providers as well it's not like men cannot cook Mm -hmm. one of the best many of the best chefs in the world are actually men you understand so which contradicts the point that it's a woman's role to cook because it doesn't mean we are born with a cooking gene Mm -hmm. so it means anyone (laughs) can cook right (laughs) yeah yeah so if that's the case even hairdressing Mm -hmm. these days we see men doing hairdressing Mm -hmm. nursing Mm-hmm. teaching mm-hmm. we have both men and women in this course and in fact you'll find contrary that most men are in this course as compared to women mm-hmm. so that goes against what we were taught before to mm-hmm. believe mm-hmm. but traditionally if you were to do law mm-hmm. who would you find in a law course to be a man, man. right yes, yes. because these technical jobs were left for men mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. and women were seen to be the way we are described emotional human beings that uh, we are fragile because we were seen as fragile and that's why we feel like it is said that um, it's a man's work to protect us because we are too weak to protect ourselves mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. and that's how that's the traditional woman yeah. and she knew that my job is to do one give birth two take care of my husband mm-hmm. and traditionally it was women's work to make sure that they ate that is kwashamba that was their job true yet mm-hmm. so and i have to make sure that my family has food my kids are well nurtured their father is well taken care of so that they can provide mm-hmm. and that worked well because there was no point where this woman would be telling your man today is your day to cook mm-hmm. and that's why because kila mtu alikuwa na jaro yake and the man also knew it is for me to provide mm-hmm. even when you look at the traditional setting even polygamy mm-hmm. that right now people are saying men are polygamous naturally mm-hmm. the traditional woman knew mm-hmm. that at some point mm-hmm. a man would want to bring in another woman that's but right. it was the duty of the man to inform the first wife mm-hmm. that she he had gone out there mm-hmm. and seen a new woman that he would like mm-hmm. and he was to bring this woman and the wife could approve right but yeah. the the lady knew there's somebody else coming yeah not the way we are doing it right now that until the man dies that's when you know we were five of us <laughs> with the same man and we have kids yeah so if you look at this woman now the modern woman now that's a traditional woman mm-hmm. her job was that she knew even when where men are she's not supposed to be seen and even how she used to address her husband it was with respect you know humility and that those ones who would you know even if a man who had three wives all of them would cook together mm-hmm. and serve the man the food all together and they they, they were just a way it doesn't mean that women did not have a po- an opinion i'm sure the men would con- would ask their wives for opinion even back then mm-hmm. maybe they would not say it publicly that my wife said this mm-hmm. but i'm sure their men if they married in, it doesn't mean that our parents our grandparents were not intelligent just because they didn't go to school you know mm-hmm. so I, don't, i don't believe intelligence is measured by the fact that somebody has gone to school mm-hmm. but i also feel like those women were smart they were naturally smart because you had to be smart to be able to 
manage particular things you need a little bit of information mm-hmm. and they were very good with you no know, hands on things like you know boga dawa za kienyeji those kind of things midwives mm-hmm. this the world worked yeah. without all these kind of things yeah. we didn't have fridge but these people preserved food sure It's, it doesn't mean that this that, that was a traditional woman that mm-hmm. was her job yeah. now we are coming to the modern woman mm-hmm. the modern woman you've been told what a man can do a woman can do better mm-hmm. right yeah. and i don't I, and i said last time i don't understand where that notion came from but it's one thing that needs to be done away with because as i explained women and men we are complementary creatures mm-hmm. we are not equal okay at no point mm-hmm. are we equal because even in our biological creation itself mm-hmm. we are not equal mm-hmm. we are complementary each other that i need him and he needs me mm-hmm. so that when we come together things work together you understand uh-huh. Uh-huh. but if you are all equal it means i don't need a man and a man does not need me even for me to say i can give birth i need that man to be there so they can be able to have a child you understand sure. mm-hmm. so that's already one so this modern woman has been told especially if you go for this empowerment programs for young girls they teach them that you can achieve anything which is true mm-hmm. you can achieve anything mm-hmm. but at what cost there's always a cost everything in life has a cost there's a price to pay uh-huh. if you're a career woman look at women who are career women right now that's the modern woman we've gone to school at least right now 80% of any enrollment in school are more of women than are that boys yeah. right yeah that's because there's, a, there's been a lot of advocacy on the inclusion of women and girls in these spaces that we want the affirmative action that you know takes care of people in the marginalized community where we are women are considered part of the marginalized groups you know uh-huh. so we have how many organizations do we have that are giving sanitary pads things that anything that can bar a girl from going to school mm-hmm. there's somebody who's taking care of that we do not have issues that are barring girls from going to school yeah. right yeah. now we have fgm anti fgm we have anti fgm day february 6th was the the world anti anti female genit- uh, genital mutilation day right mm-hmm. and these are things that are celebrated yeah. but i also ask myself do we have things that affect men that affect, are not recognized affect. right mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so this this modern woman is educated mm-hmm. she has access to information yeah she is uh, empowered what we call the empowerment to have explained the empowerment is in those pillars that she's been given a self sense worth yeah she's been told she's confident mm-hmm. women are told you are the prize mm-hmm. you are the flower this man needs to pursue you needs to work for you mm-hmm. to get you because at the end of the day he's the one who's benefiting more than you as if he's not educated you know <laughs> and, and and we and that this mode then what has that done because the other woman was not educated mm-hmm. right now women are enjoying things that our grandparents did not yeah. right sure. right now i have more chance to be employed mm-hmm. as compared to another guy mm-hmm. or another man mm-hmm. or boy who we are around the same age mm-hmm. probably have the same qualification just by the mere fact that i'm a woman and what are we trying to do we are trying to give equal opportunities and equal resources mm-hmm. to this marginalized group mm-hmm. who are women yeah. right yeah. so i'm not saying that i'm not disqualifying the modern woman but then everything that we are enjoying right now has mm-hmm. come at a cost yeah. and that cost is what we are not willing mm-hmm. to discuss uh-huh. you know that's the part that we've left out uh-huh. i'm not saying feminism as a movement was bad mm-hmm. but right now the type of feminism we have mm-hmm. has veered off from the original intention mm-hmm. of what feminism was meant to be yeah. because most women even right now organizations that are starting this discussions they want to educate these young girls to give them this kind of information the thing is what has been the experience with men uh-huh. most of them have probably been married mm-hmm. it didn't work mm-hmm. they had in a, they were in a relationship with a man mm-hmm. it didn't work mm-hmm. but things just did not go right because sometimes life just happens you know sure. and when that happens somebody feels they need to empower these young girls what information do they tell them mm-hmm. here because i tell people your mind cannot tell the difference between jokes and uh, when you're being serious whatever you internalize becomes a reality mm-hmm. and it has distorted women's reality one thing i do not like about feminism as a movement is it did away with the culture of family it does not promote okay family mm-hmm. or the whole communion thing mm-hmm. you know it's all about me and that's why this is find women we are very entitled mm-hmm. we are entitled to men's money we mm-hmm. feel it's our right mm-hmm. we are entitled to things that we, we are not supposed to be entitled to like we walk every and we feel like by the fact by the mere fact i'm a woman mm-hmm. I am you owe me a certain privilege or something you understand yeah. and that's why it's easy for a woman to come out there and say this man raped me whether there's proof or not this man is guilty until proven innocent is mm-hmm. not gu- innocent until proven guilty mm-hmm. we've seen women abuse men publicly slap them pour water on them those are what we call gender based violence uh-huh. there's a time there was a law that was supposed to be passed if a man winked at a woman 
it was supposed to be an offense mm-hmm. right this mm-hmm. a feminism this is the feminism movement was still working until now mm-hmm. because these are things that sprout from that particular movement yes and men denied it of course mm-hmm. but how many times have you seen in social media that women we as women openly discuss men's genitalia you know and women it it, it has, it's not a secret and people mm-hmm. find it sexy when a woman is talking about it Mm-hmm. But then, if a man was to come and comment on your physique mm-hmm. on social media, would it be considered uh, would it be considered uh, cyberbullying? Of course, it would be considered cyberbullying, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Now, I'm trying to give you the the hindsight mm-hmm. of what has been hidden from feminism. Yes. You know, yes, yes. Um, see the greatest men. Look at the case of uh, this actor. He's an actor. The other day, he won a case against his wife because his wife said he abused her. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. and uh, he was he he. He missed all his opportunities because of this allegation, mm-hmm. only to come and be proven that oh, Johnny Depp, of course, yes, Johnny Depp, mm-hmm. that the woman all along was the abuser, uh-huh. and the man was silent for all these years, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. But then when she talked about it, did anybody take time to understand? Let me not even go far. The case of Maxine mm-hmm. and the boyfriend. Uh-huh. If that had been Maxine, mm-hmm. if the case had been reversed, mm-hmm. and Maxine was the one who had been abused mm-hmm. by her boyfriend, and then fortunately passed on, mm-hmm. what do you think would have been the kind of attention that that story would have attracted? Did mm-hmm. you see any feminist movement coming to advocate for for justice for the ex-boyfriend? Mm-hmm. Of course not. Everybody was quiet. But then when these things happened for women, mm-hmm. we we all out, and it was ironical because. Only a few uh, few weeks ago, we were in fact I think it was a week or two ago, mm-hmm. we had the 16 days of activism mm-hmm. that was advocating for uh, gender-based violence, you know, mm-hmm. against both men and women. This was a man who was abused and succumbed to the abuse. Why are you not talking about it? Because that's a case to be discussed. Mm-hmm. So we cannot try and say we are a society that is trying to fight for gender equality. Mm-hmm. I think gender equality is a scam. Well, for me, uh-huh. it is a scam because what we enjoy now mm-hmm. is gender equity. Equity is the provision of opportunities, uh, resources according to your needs. Because mm-hmm. I don't think if we are to do equality that right now, we do, it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman, if mm-hmm. women would survive. Even the creation of the women rep seats, mm-hmm. that is equity. Because we are trying to elevate women, giving them space. Equal. Because if we are to leave the field open, they might not be able to get this post. Sure. You understand? Mm-hmm. Because even if so, when we go equal on the ground, mm-hmm. how many women governors do we have? For this time, it was supposed to be seven. If the one for Meru is still in, in the seat, mm-hmm. there were only seven out of 47 counties. Mm-hmm. That means 40. Right. Mm-hmm. So it still shows that there's, there's unbalance. Mm-hmm. power right mm-hmm. so we are creating this post to elevate women because if we were to say let's be equal we would all know mm-hmm. that it would not work mm-hmm. that's why we have the third gender rule mm-hmm. the two third gender rule to ensure that at least we have women in power mm-hmm. because equality mm-hmm. as we want to say it is mm-hmm. it's not working and we know it is not working mm-hmm. that's why what is working in this country all these things you see all these are equity okay not equality okay. and equality is mean means it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman we are both applying for a job, let your credentials sell you. If you do not have them, we do not care. So even if all men have the credentials, they are all going to get employed. Mm-hmm. But then right now, because of their third gender rule, the fact that there has to be a percentage of women in your company, mm-hmm. that is equity, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. that's why we have those posts.